Hey guys, I'm Benjamin James Baker, also known as EG the Muslim. I'm a professional StarCraft 2 player playing for Team Evil Geniuses. I am a Terran player, so if you are a Terran needing or seeking help, this is the place to be. Um, I'm good at giving advice, I'm good at giving tips, I run my own stream and stuff, and I often offer a lot of helpful advice to a lot of people. So we'll get right into this game. This is against Dignitas' Killer. So this is one of the new maps on ladder called Korhal Compound. I want to talk about this matchup in kind of detail and just help you out with some things that, that make sense to me. Okay, so I'm gonna get this game started. I'm gonna run it on two times speed for now just to uh, talk to you very briefly about some things that I do very early on. So early on, mineral stacking your SCVs. This is a pretty big thing to do. This just gives you slightly more minerals because these patches are further away. So if an SCV was on this patch instead of this one, the travel distance from here to here is obviously much shorter. So you get extra minerals. So that's just some little tip. You don't have to do it, but if you find yourself kind of wondering what to do at the start of the game, this is just something that you can do very easily. So my opponent is Dignitas Killer. He is the Red Zerg, and he's a pretty decent player on a professional team. Uh, comes from the country Chile, I do believe, and always does well at IEM events. So my build initially starts off with a 10 supply depot and a 12 barracks built by the same SCV. This is the most standard build you'll ever see and the most standard positioning. This is a semi wall off. If I build a depot here, it's a full wall off. Initially, he does harass with one drone. And a normal reaction could be, OK, I need two SCVs to deal with this. No, you don't at all. If this SCV does what he's meant to do, he'll go through the barracks in and out. And this drone will not be able to hit him enough. And despite a drone being pretty good at harassing, your SCV should be able to get more hits on this single drone than he'll be able to get on yours. So only one SCV is needed to prevent harass. And he knows that. So he runs around, wasting his time. He, he, like The best hope for him would have been that I pulled two SCVs and just wasted more of my own time. Anyway, so this SCV does go over to scout his base. As you can see, he's gone for 15 hatch and a normal pool timing, roughly a 15 pool, I think. So he feels safe against uh, two wrecks, gas after, very standard build by him. What have I done? I've done the one depot expand. This is a pretty greedy expand, but against Zergs, you can actually afford to get away with this. What's my follow-up? Just want to point this out. So I'm building my depot. I'm not building a second marine as of yet. Um, against Zerg, when I scout this base, and I believe I've done it already, and yes, I have. I scouted this base. The pool is not done. Zerg can only produce offensive units once that pool is done, and by that, I mean Zerglings. And then that leads on to other tech structures, such as roaches. Um, and in the meantime, nothing's going to attack me. I'm not scared of drones attacking me because that'll just cause him to lose the game. They are meant to be mining at his base. And so I don't really need that many Marines out right now. So I can play pretty greedy. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. So I'm throwing down two refineries. I'm still, or I've only just started making Marines now. Now, as I did scout his base, I know exactly what's going on. And I throw down two extra SCVs on each gas. So I'm mining a lot of gas right now, throwing down a bunker, and now some Marines. What's this bunker for? This is just in case he sends six to eight Lings at me, which he could very well do. Um, as we see, he isn't making Lings, but me making this bunker, I can salvage it for 75 minerals back. It's better to be safe than sorry. I can't keep an SCV in his base. These Queens will stop it. And even two Lings can kill my SCV. So there's no point hanging that around. If you lose your SCV for that bit of information to see maybe how many Lings are coming, that's 50 minerals lost. If I can just salvage this bunker, that's just 25 minerals lost. So in every way, shape, and form, this is more efficient. So my base layout, I am getting a factory, uh, getting a reactor on this Rex at the front. I also want to point out that I built this bunker four grid spots away, so this will be enough space for two depots. Unfortunately, this map doesn't fit in three depots here. It's roughly like two or three and a half or something along those lines. Um, but anyway, we do see by the production tab he is mass droning, and I'm making Hellions. I'm also making a starport down here. My reasoning for putting the starport here instead of up here or over here, purely because if an overlord does run across here, the obvious scout path is to go over here, this big chunk of space where I could build, or over here. If I build it here, the only way for him to actually get there is an overlord either sneaking down here, which I can easily see and get the Marines out to pop it, or the overlord coming from this direction, in which case I can get the Marines out and pop it again. So it's just about denying vision, denying scouting. I could even probably build it even further down here, but hey, <laughs> this is me first trying out this build. So I am making cloak on my Banshee. This is a pretty good opening. So here we see that it does take three depots rather than just two. I can even put like a bigger building here, like an engineering bay to block off, but it won't be happening. So my Hellion count's stacking up, just doing a little bit of harass, killing some lings, trying to do as much damage to queens as possible. Why am I trying to kill queens? Oh, <laughs> I just want to uh, show that again very quickly. Um, 
I got this creep tumor down to a very low health, then I put my own Hellion on top of it and shot it just with one Hellion shot to kill it. That's pretty smart. And I mean, on tumors like this, when they're not just, when they're not able to spawn more, it's probably not worth it. But when they are a new fresh creep tumor, they're 25 energy each. So sometimes it is definitely worth it. And I'm focusing this queen now because I'm making Banshees and I'm gonna be making two Banshees. They are really good against queens, but queens are also the only answer that Zerg on tier one have to Banshee. So if you can get their health down, Banshee is gonna be that much more efficient against them. So this is what I'm doing here. I'm trying to be as annoying as possible. I do scout them out so I know exactly what's going on. Base wise, I'm putting up my third CC. This is so I don't get too far behind. I'm putting up two engineering base too. And if you look at my production facilities, I've only got three buildings able to produce offensive units, but I feel so safe that this harass is gonna keep him busy for a long period of time. Here, this harass, I was hoping he'd have more drones there. I kill a few drones here, again. So, workers kill count, only four for roughly six Hellions. That was not a good trade at all. But I did get to, I did get to see what his roach count was, and it was actually significantly high. So at this point, I'm throwing down a lot more wrecks, and it'll be even more wrecks, and it should be another factory too pretty soon. Getting upgrades, so I won't be too far behind him. And look at the production tab. He's producing 15 drones. And look at this. I'll put it on just the normal speed for now. But look, that queen being on low health meant it dropped almost instantaneously. And look here, I'm just killing spores. He can't get them up in time. Given that they are cloaked, he needs at least lair tech to be able to make an overseer. He's making seven spore crawlers. That's seven drones that have turned into spores. So that's 75 minerals each and seven drones that have been lost. So work account wise, I'm catching him up slowly but surely. What can he do at this point? He's waiting for this overseer to form. He's got queens here. He's making more spores here. Losing a lot of mining time. Look at the minerals uh, accumulated. And I've got lots of mules to throw down here. I am getting such a lead by just this little push. At this point, I do have to move back. As I said, queens are the only thing that can deal with banshees. And when you do outnumber banshees, even if it's just a three to two ratio, the queens do pretty good. So anyways, after that harass, 59 drones, or 65 now, to 56 SCVs. That is actually very good for a Terran. You see my upgrades kicking in here, combat shields, stim, plus one, plus one, getting marauders, marines, and armory down to continue my upgrades, so I'm not too far behind. And just, my infrastructure hasn't started, it will start kicking in very soon. It hasn't quite started just yet. I'm X-Wing to take my third. I have a lot of mule energy. Um, in fact, just one on here, two on here, but that's roughly 800 minerals per minute that are just stacked up in energy. So my income is gonna go through the roof pretty shortly. So he does start trying to spread creep and block my expo, but I sent a few Marines down just in case. These were mainly just in case there was a Ling blocking or something, but they do actually kill the Overlord too. Okay, this is something about this map that I just wanna point out. I did so much damage early on, and I know he made so many drones given that I was killing so many, and he still had so many, that I know his unit count will not be that scary. And on this map, this is the Ledge of Doom. There is also one down here for siege tanks where if you take control of this, you can actually hit the command center or the hatchery if it was in the same spot. spot. So talking about the Ledge of Doom, this is what I plan on taking. And even though this isn't a big force to be moving out with, in fact, it's pretty m tiny. Like uh, when I have such infrastructure just kicking in right now, why would I bother moving out? Well, supply-wise, I'm 20 supply ahead, and now I'm just going for that cute, neat spot. So he does start moving a spore crawler over. Don't know what that was for, maybe over here. But anyways, I do siege up at the top of this cliff, and what does this offer me? It offers me a huge, huge victory in terms of positioning. He's got roaches running at me here. I use the tanks to focus the roaches. The roaches are dying one by one. I do start microing the Banshee's back, but look, he has to engage this on the top. He has to kill the tanks by running through my bio. My bio, are, oh, my tanks are inflicting pain, great pain on his, on his base. And look here, I've got a Banshee, I've got tanks, I've got bio. Even though it's only a small force, Supply-wise, I'm gaining such a lead here. And his units that pop out, they're just getting bombarded by my units. So this is not good for him at all. He is worrying, he's panicking. The only thing that's being produced are lings by him. Anything that he can produce will be produced. And income-wise, I'm leafing far ahead. I've got so many mules down here. I'm pretty safe building a bunker behind the minerals too, which is really annoying. It means those ling runbys will not do that much damage. They'll be distracted by this bunker and the bunker just inflicts great, great pain on them. Finally, he will be able to clear this up, but for what cost? Look at, the, look at the unit loss tab. It's 4,000 compared to my 1,600. And look, even this, he won't clean it up with that amount of lings loss. So 5,000 resources almost against my 2,000. I am so far ahead this game. And look, he's producing 12 infestors. That is a huge, huge, huge amount. But what am I producing? 
a lot. I'm producing a lot. And uh, while I am still putting the push on here, it doesn't look like I have an army, but um, in fact, where is my army? It is actually missing. I've got 160 supply, but it doesn't look like it at all. But it's just all in production. Every building of mine is producing at an alarming rate. Like every building is producing as almost as efficiently as possible. And look here, he loses his fourth and he's dead. So just talking about that game, taking advantage of little things like the map layout. I knew that was a really cute position. And even though this map may not be used in tournaments right now, if it was, that position is something that you should take advantage of. On Shakuras, when Zerg play against Protoss, they take advantage of the fact that it's very hard for a Protoss to secure a third base. And why not? Why shouldn't you abuse that? If you can abuse something, you definitely should. Um, some other things, harassing, even if your harass doesn't go well, use the information that he's giving you. Unit counts, um, drone counts, whatever. Building counts, unit composition. Use that and try and think about, okay, if I was in his position, um, what does this mean I'm looking toward? Um, I'm going to damage his queen because that's the only thing that can attack my banshees later on, and that's going to be really beneficial. Just little things like that can put you in a really, really good lead, and just don't play too scared. That's one thing that can put you in a bad position, playing too scared, and just being very worried about what your opponent can throw at you. Um, and if you do play scared, you play hesitant, you play kind of timid, um, your opponent can play greedy and just kind of out macro you, or he can play risky and kill you. Um, it's just there's too many bad things that happen from playing safe. So thank you for watching, guys. Go over to evilgeniuses.net and check out some of our other videos to help you out, no matter what race you play, you can see games from Idra, Machine, In Control, or myself. Thank you very much for watching.